All right, people, I'm back. I've been kind of delayed for the most part. My name is Fabian, for those of you that don't know, and you're on my channel, and we are going to be recording a video today on one of my journeys. Um, you don't have to like, you don't have to subscribe, you can comment as freely as you like, but today I wanna to talk about how in the security field, there are some that just go over the top and do too much. And I can't, it just, it's one of the biggest pet peeves I have and I just have to speak on it. So what we're going to be talking about today is basically how, first of all, what we got going on in the country today and how it pertains to law enforcement and being that we're security, we work closely with law enforcement to deter crime and assist in preventing crime and stopping it, uh, as well as keeping people safe, keeping the property safe for the client, as well as the, the customers or the tenants that live there or whatever the case may be. Um, in this one video, I just have to call this guy out. And I'm going to continue to keep posting videos like this. And you could call it, oh, you're quarterbacking, you're not there, you don't know. Well, just let me give you a little brief background about who I am. Um, so, I've pretty much worked in security for about 10 years now. And I've worked everything from healthcare to private, you know, housing to public housing to nightclubs, bars, even gambling rooms. And I've even done personal protection, which is like, you know, escorting people from point A to point B and what whatnot. Um, I've also done security assessments for, for my bosses or my managers to let them know, you know, what fallacies we have, what safety issues we have, what might become a problem, what is an ongoing problem and how to rectify it. Um, so I think I'm pretty much a, a good judge of character when it comes to making the calls as to should I intervene, should I not, should I call PD, should I just observe and report it, you know what I'm saying? Because there's some times where you could go and just make something out of nothing and it's just, oh my God. But also at the same, in the same token, you can wind up putting yourself in a precarious situation where you get hurt or you could get your coworkers hurt because even though you might not be there, now you've given whoever it is that's watching the perception and the idea that all of your your guards or officers are basically the same way as this one super cop which is what we call them um and another thing that i want to talk about as well is when you see a guard wearing anything other than the word security that should be a dead trigger right there because usually they'll put something like public safety officer or crime prevention officer or uh, enforcement. You'll just see enforcement officer. Like, what are you enforcing? You, know, you have to clarify what you're enforcing. So if you, if, if for me personally, if you're embarrassed to wear the word security because of the connotations that come with it, then you shouldn't be doing this job at all because clearly you have a complex if you have a problem with wearing anything other than the word security. Um, if you, I'm sorry, if you have a complex, if you have a problem with wearing anything that does not allude to security, you get what I'm saying? So if you don't have the words that say security, security enforcement officer, or you just have the word that says officer, you just look like the ultimate try hard. And it's just, oh my God. And that actually goes to show the level of training and understanding of the industry that you have. So even though to the person that you're trying to sell your business to might not be familiar with the actual terminology, the legal ramifications and everything, you are still going to be held liable for whatever may arise from you being considered anything other than security. Because what a lot of people fail to understand is that if you don't have the word security written on your chest or whatever it is that you're wearing, then someone can accuse you of impersonating a Leo. Keep that in mind. And yes, you can be charged. And if a prosecutor feels like taking up that charge on you, which sometimes they won't, but it all depends on the severity of the situation. Anyway, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of what I'm talking about. 
So what I'm talking about today is um, we have this one channel on YouTube and I'm involved in a Facebook group and I noticed that there's this one gentleman in particular by the name of I think I, I'm not gonna say his name I don't know if he wants people knowing who he is on Facebook but he has a channel on YouTube called top flight security and he uploads videos from his body cam of his interactions with the people now the first thing that I'm going to address with him and if he's watching if I'm hope he is I know he's gonna watch because I'm going to post this on the page um, and it's not to stir up any problems it's just to see if he has the means of understanding and comprehending because they're two different terminologies but they both mean two different things what it is that he's doing wrong and how he could do it better because if he continues to do it not only is he going to get himself hurt but there's a possibility he could get his co-workers hurt or terminated from the contract now I've seen a couple of the interactions that he's had on a, on a bunch of videos that he has up there and in almost all of the videos he has no soft skills at all and in this field and in law enforcement you need that you don't have any soft skills you're not gonna make it very far I don't even know why you would even hire someone if they can't exemplify a situation where soft school soft skills would remedy it and I talked about this in a previous video that I posted on the on the live feed of Facebook on that page that we have and it just goes to show you the level of ignorance and arrogance because no one seems to agree with what I'm saying but yet at the same time no one has the balls to disagree with what I'm saying because they have no grounds to do so so that just that's just proof in the pudding as you know as they say it um, this one video that I'm and I'm actually taking a couple of his videos and just for a disclaimer this is for educational purposes I am NOT a legal representative I cannot you know nothing nothing that I tell you in this video should be used as a defense I am NOT liable for anything that you do or anything that you say so if you say well I heard this what I'm speaking to you from is from general knowledge in the industry and also from my experiences in the three states that I've done security their basis for security all falls under the same umbrella of ethics and these guys that I see on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram doing fake doing security in other states and different cities they they have problems and majority of their problems arise from the lack of education that their guards have and the Robocop hero complex so anyway in this one video I I recorded this video to show you and yes I can use it because it's not an infringement of copyright because this is for educational purposes so I have fair use in it um, he approaches a vehicle and when he approaches this vehicle it it has a gentleman inside and the gentleman has a firearm on his lap first thing wrong with that is one why are you approaching a pe person's vehicle two once you notice that there was a firearm in the vehicle you should have backed off why because you don't know what this person's intent is and you don't get paid enough I'm sorry to tell you you don't get paid enough to, to go in there John Rambo and think you're gonna save the day and then three by the looks of the video it looks like the gentleman was just pretty yes he was drinking his car supposedly he was smoking but my my issue with this is the the way that he handled it could have went terribly wrong because you could tell by the way him and his partner because I'm assuming in the background is his partner because he, in one part he acts as the guy does he have his gun on him and then he proceeds to say okay you have your gun on him I'm gonna go and reach in and I'm gonna grab this weapon X you, you're just crazy at this point but I'm gonna let you guys watch for yourself don't move, move. do you you move he has a gun on his lap don't move do you move 1939 Central Careful. Okay. You be careful. I got one at gunpoint. Be careful. Who wanna huh? come pick Hold it on. Up? Be careful. Do him it. Which one of you wanna come Listen. pick it up? Don't want, no one don't get hurt. Don't talk. Just don't don't you move. Right. Just don't move. I just told you 1939 I Central. I'm gonna be Caribbean Villas, Zone 16, 
over by building 23 requesting right. signal six. Sit, I have a black cool. male with a signal zero on his lap. It's going to be a white, a white car. A white BMW, tell him. You got your gun on him? Yes. I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach in and grab it. Don't you fucking move. You fucking move, I'm going to blow your fucking head off. You can't open from this. All right, just don't fucking, I don't care, just don't move. I'll figure it out. You don't move. You got to press a lot. You don't move. Okay, and we're back. So now that you guys seen that video, and you guys are free to comment as you like, you, if you don't know about the dangers that could come from approaching a vehicle, I tell my people, never, ever approach a vehicle under any circumstances, unless it's one of those situations where there's a baby in the car, an animal in the car, it's blistering heat, or someone is, you know, unconscious and they need help. But if the person is awake and aware, and you know that they're not supposed to be there, do the smart thing. O-R. That's it. Observe, report, call it into PD, let them come. Why? Because they're properly trained, they're, what, they're better equipped than you, and they have better tactics on how to assess that situation. They can easily run the plate and determine whether or not it's worth the risk of stopping. Because now, technically, you could be considered doing what's known as a Terry stop. And you don't want to do that because you don't have the authority or the powers to do that. Now, every state is different. South Carolina, I'm not mistaken, I think security officers are deputized by uh, law enforcement. So they have arrest powers. Uh, North Carolina, they only have citizens arrest powers. So the most you could do is detain someone just as well as any other private citizen can. Here in Virginia, you can arrest someone if you're an armed security officer and you have the arrest authority training. But when you do that, you have to understand the ramifications and what the penal codes are and how you cite them because there is, there is rules on how to engage in that, in that situation, which one of them is ultimately if you're going to be the arresting officer, then you have to have that person transported and processed within an hour, I believe. So if you don't have any of the means to do any of the things that I just mentioned and you don't have the legal grounds to do any of what I've mentioned, then you shouldn't be doing that type of work, period. You should just be doing what you're hired to do. Observe and report. I don't care what you say is in the contract. At the end of the day, when you go to court, what's going to be thrown back at you by the prosecutor or the state or the municipality versus whoever the, whoever the hell you are is going to be what is the scope of authority for the security industry in the state. And I can almost guarantee you, you have limited authority. And even though you are representing the client, it does not matter because at the end of the day, that person still has civil rights and still has constitutional rights, even if the property has infringements and clauses against those rights, you can still be held liable because why? You are not a peace officer. You are not a law enforcement officer at all. So just look at that, you know what I'm saying? Um, another thing I wanted to point out in this other video that he has up there, he does the same thing again. He approaches a vehicle with two females in it, suspected, he's suspecting that they're smoking or rolling up marijuana. Again, this is a dangerous situation because things could go south really quick. And to be honest with you, we get shot at just as much, if not more than the police, and it goes unreported. It goes, it, it doesn't really hit mainstream. So, and the reason why I say that is because once a person realizes that you're security and you're not police, they don't give a fuck. And, you know, contrary to common belief, a lot of these people, they don't know that in certain states, assaulting a security officer have, levies the same type of offense as assaulting a, a public servant or, or a peace officer. Like in New York, you assault a train worker, an MTA worker, you're charged as the same as, you know, assaulting a police officer. It's the same thing. And in some states it's the same, and in some states it's not. And then in some states, the, the it's up to the to the prosecutor to ramp up the charges, so that way it can actually have a better meaning and, and you know have a better outcome of justice. But 
in this video, he walks up to the two females. Clearly, you can tell they're probably in their 20s. I would say 18 to 25 at most. They're young. They're smoking in their car. And he's asking them questions where they stay, where they live. From what I gather, he probably has one of those contracts where the tenants are under advisement that they sign that if security asks them where they live, they have to tell them and all of that. Again, another violation of, you know, rights. But that's the situation. So now, you know, he they're answering the questions and then he tells them, hey, you can't do that. I get that. But my beef with it is, one, you're approaching a vehicle. And then at the end of the video, he starts to... Um, say the vehicle's license plate number now here's my issue with that even though even though the uh the license plate can be considered public information because you know it's on the outside of your car you don't have to be broadcasting that type of information on personal property on the internet you could have easily edited that out um the same thing that i notice is that these type of guys or girls or whoever they are when they upload videos they pick and choose what they want to upload and they don't give you the full story and that's the problem and the reason why they do that is because they know when they watch the video if it's the full video people are going to be like okay yeah you're not in the right you're wrong you're an idiot i don't even know why i watched this you know what i'm saying and again that's just one of my beefs with it if you're gonna upload it make sure you upload it properly the full story and another thing is stop labeling people he has another video up there where he says another drunk idiot first of all that this all this ties into why you can't be a cop and I don't want to hear this crap about you know, you do security because you like security and you never tried to apply for, to become a police officer. Because if you did and you got, you know, oh yeah, we're not taking you, there's usually reasons why you're overweight, you're, you, do, you don't have the, you don't have college credits for whatever that agency is requesting, uh, you don't have former military, or, you know, you didn't pass psych, or you just gave a shitty interview. Um, now, speaking for myself, I never tried. I tried at one point, I thought about it, didn't want to go through with it. Why? Because of all the politics involved. Now, that may be some other people's reason as well. But in most cases, they don't say what I say. They give me a bunch of runaround. You know what I'm saying? When they ask me, I tell them the honest truth. It's too much politics. I'm not trying to be playing politics. Why? Because I've learned that there's a lot of politics in just the security world. Imagine law enforcement. Just imagine law enforcement. And I'm not ready to deal with that type of stress. I deal with the stress alone, just getting to and from work and dealing with people on an everyday basis. I can handle stress pretty easily, but for some people they can't. And I can tell they can't because how they carry themselves when they work in security. That goes to tell you, you don't have no reason to be wearing a uniform and a gun, let alone a gun. You know what I'm saying? With that type of attitude. Um, so, all in all, what I'm trying to get across to you guys, when you see stuff like this, if you're working in this industry, do not be afraid to call them out. And I'm not necessarily telling you to bash them, but I am telling you to just spread the message around that, hey, you know, this could be done differently. You know, work on your soft skills. Do you have any type of crisis intervention training? Do you have any type of um, PTSD training? I have PTSD training. Yes, I do. And I learned that at the hospital, how to identify people with you know, possible PTSD, or um, how to identify people with autism, how to identify people with any type of bipolar spectrum disorder or anything like that. It, it all goes down to the level of training that you have. And if you don't have this type of training, I think you should get it, whether you have to pay for it or not, or whether your, your company requires you to have it or not, you should get it. Why? Because it will save your ass. It will save your ass in more ways than you can think. And I'm not talking about being fired from a job as a way of saving you. No, I'm talking about literally physically saving your life because now you can understand and see what's happening before it happens. A lot of you guys that do this job, you don't go into the job thinking clearly. You just rush in with this, oh, I'm, I'm Craig and Day Day mentality, and you're gonna get yourselves hurt, or you're gonna get your coworkers hurt, and I personally cannot stand working with people like you, because people like you make it worse for the, the industry as a whole, which is why there's a cutthroat, you know, 
This is a cutthroat. This is a cutthroat industry. This is a laughing industry. This is a joke of an industry, and it's it's just beyond me at this point. Again, you guys don't have to like. You don't have to subscribe. I'm gonna be putting up more footage real soon, and I'm gonna be pointing out a couple of things. I'm actually gonna be trying to reach out to other people with, you know, valid, you know, validated experiences and all that. And I'm I'm starting up this podcast. So if this video does not get taken down. Trust you me, it will be shared across platforms of IG, Facebook, and as well as YouTube. All right, stay safe, be smart, and stop doing too much.